So if you turn in your Bibles to James, fourth chapter, six verses six through eight, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And it says, uh, and he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I want you to get a picture of that word flee because in Deuteronomy, in the blessings, on the blessing side, Deuteronomy 28, it says, God said, when, when you're doing what I told you to do, your enemies will come at you one way, but they will flee from you seven ways. It's like they will flee in chaos from you. They will flee. They can't get away fast enough. I mean, so it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. I've titled this sermon, Death Blows to the Devil's Schemes. Death Blows to the devil's schemes. You know, I hear and read and see people talking and preaching about spiritual warfare all the time. Anybody ever heard anything about spiritual warfare? And uh, I have seen some really far out stuff put out there. People like people up on their platform Karate kicking the devil. <laughs> I mean, I've read this. This takes place. And they always tell you, well, why are those people, when they come into the, what are those, what are those people doing? They're up in portals and they're, they're fighting with the devil to clean the demons out of the portals. They really, I mean, this is Christians. Don't be laughing. This is our brothers and sisters. I have read about, listen, I've read this. This is true. This happened. I've read about people chartering jets to fly at 35,000 feet so they could do spiritual warfare with the prince of the power of the air. I have read. Now, if you were on that flight, don't tell your neighbor. Nobody knows. <laughs> I, let me tell you this, I have been on flights and been doing spiritual warfare at 35,000 feet. But I, did, I didn't get on that flight to do it. <laughs> I rode on, my daughter and I, we took a trip to do hiking out through Zion National Park and, uh, and uh, Bryce Canyon and the Grand Canyon. We went on a little father-daughter vacation, hiking vacation and... Uh, we rode out there on Spirit Airlines. Don't ever do it. <laughs> do not. Do not ride on Spirit Airlines. It should have been called Demon Spirit Airlines. Anybody ever rode on Spirit Airlines? Besides me. Don't do it. I'm saving you. I'm warning you. Did somebody say yes back there? I never saw anything like it. Of course, you know, you're going to Las Vegas, and uh, the flight out was okay, but when they've lost all their money, they're not happy people. <laughs> and it was awful. But we had to take authority over the devil. We had to bind him. So I've heard about that. I've heard teaching on warring tongues, which apparently is different than just praying in other tongues. And I even heard a preacher say, oh, brother, I've had the devil on the run all day today. The problem is he's chasing me. And the, the Bible clearly says, listen to me, the Bible clearly says, follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. That's who we should follow. The Bible is very clear. It tells us that the devil is a liar. You know who he is? He's, a, he's called the father of lies. He is the ultimate liar. The, the devil is, the, the word of God also tells us that he's a thief 
who comes to kill, who comes to steal. The Bible says he's a murderer who comes to kill and destroy. This is the devil. I ran into a, a young man. I was filling up gas in my car, and I knew the guy. And, uh, you know, I knew he had demonic problems. And I was filling up, and he looks at me, and he goes, that's it, Daryl. He was on his bicycle, and he's looking in the garbage for bottles, uh, five-cent bottle deposits. And he looks at me, knew my name and that, because I'd met him before, and uh, uh, not in this town, but... He said, that's it, I've had it. He said, I am now, I've, I am now a knight in Satan's service. <laughs> he said, I am not, I'm not, you know, God's never done anything for me, so I've decided I'm going to serve the devil. And I just looked at him and I said, you just, just wait one minute till I get done, I want to talk to you. And then I went on to explain who the devil is. And I said, why is it? What do you mean, God? Well, uh, he had just had some bad things happen to him. I said, you know, you're blaming the wrong guy. God did not cause those bad things. God did not come to steal from you. God did not cause those bad things to come upon you. The very guy you want to go serve and, and be in his service, the devil is the one that did all that to you. He looks at me like, what are you talking about? I said, Jesus said, the thief comes not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I'm come to give you life and life more abundantly. I had a great talk with him. I asked him if he wanted to accept Jesus. He said, not, 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 not right now. One week later, I was having lunch with Bob, your husband, in the, in the uh, Oweagle Diner on Main Street there. He was working at the Bridge of Hope, and I met, met him. We went to lunch. We go to sit down at the lunch. The, the very guy comes in, the, the guy that I'd witnessed to. He comes in, he sits down at the counter. He comes in, he kind of looks at me, he sits down at the counter, he gets up. He goes, Pastor Darrell! The whole restaurant is filled. He yells it out. Pastor Darrell! I accepted Jesus yesterday! I got up, I went over, I gave him a hug, I said, welcome to the family! And he's still serving God today. Come on, we got the answer. And I know he got a job. I know he's not digging bottles out anymore. God is taking care of that guy. Amen? So, he's a deceiver. He's a, he's, the Bible also calls the devil the accuser of the brethren. He is continually working to discredit and point out every believer's shortcomings. Did you know that? Don't you jump on his bandwagon. Are you listening to me? This is good teaching. You better listen to this. Don't you jump on his bandwagon and start accusing your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Because if you are talking to anybody about them, accusing them of anything, talk bad mouth in any one of your brothers and sisters, guess, guess who's who you're siding up with? The devil. That ought to be reason enough for us never to say a bad word about our brothers and sisters. Amen. Come on. Come on. Are you listening? Write that down. <laughs> the Bible is also very, very, very clear that Jesus defeated the devil. He disarmed him and he made an open display of the devil as a vanquished foe. He's defeated. He is defeated. Colossians 2.15 in the Amplified Version says, God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us. God disarmed. Principalities and powers are demon spirits. 
There are rulers of the darkness of this world. There's principalities and powers. And there's spiritual wickedness in high places. There's four categories of demons. And Jesus disarmed them. He disarmed them. It said, it says here, the principalities and powers that were ranged against us. He disarmed them. Any demon, any devil, and let me tell you, they will come to attack you. They will come to bother you. Well, Pastor Darrell, you're a faith guy. Why don't you just pray that the devil will never bother me anymore? I'll give you what Brother, Brother Hagen had somebody ask him that. And he said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. They looked at him and went, what are you talking about? He goes, because I'll have to pray that you die and go to heaven. Because as long as you're on this earth, the devil goeth about, roams about, seeking whom he may devour. But he just bumps up against you and he's like, uh oh, I can't devour them. They know who they are. They know what Jesus did. They know that I'm disarmed, that I can just make gnarly noises and faces, but there's nothing I can do to harm them. Are you listening? Hallelujah. So he disarmed the principalities and powers. I want everybody to say that. The devil, the devil. is disarmed. disarmed. And he made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over, him, in, over them in him and in it, the cross. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Yes. You're the champion. Jesus is grabbing your arm up and holding it up in the air. You are the champion. Hallelujah. That's who you are. And the Bible also tells us how to keep the devil in his place. And that's why I call this death blows to the devil. You know, doing the word always puts the devil back in his place and manifests Jesus' victory over him every time. I said, doing the word of God always puts the devil back in his place and manifests Jesus' victory over him every time. I'm telling you this, you got sickness in your body, start meditating on the word. You got, you got struggles in your finances, meditate on the word of God. What happens is... People will say a scripture one time and they think, oh, it didn't happen. It must not be true. No. The devil comes immediately. The devil comes immediately. You gotta be bold, have a bulldog persistence. You gotta grab a hold of that word and say, nothing is shaking me off this. And you, God will cause you to triumph if you don't let go. Are you listening? So, the Bible says this, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? Amen. The weapons, God has equipped you. Not only that, he has, he has custom fit a suit of armor for you. And, he, and his, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal at all but they are mighty. And the devil recognizes you when you start wielding the weapons of your warfare. Are you listening? Death blows to the devil's schemes I'm talking about. I, I hate the devil. Amen. I know hate's a strong word, but I hate him. I hate him and I rejoice in every soul that is saved. I rejoice in every victory that my brother or sister has over the devil and all his schemes. I just rejoice in it. I rejoice when, God, when people are set free. Amen? And it just makes me like, ha, 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 devil. I'm telling you, he's a master deceiver. And that's all he's got is smoke and mirrors anymore. 
and he's just trying to get you to fall for it. He's just trying to get you to fall for it. That's, all, that's the only way he can accomplish anything in our lives is if we fall for his lies. That is the truth. So, I'm going to just talk about three weapons. We have communion Sunday. Three weapons. Ephesians 6, 17 says... And take the sword of the Spirit. I, I left out the helmet of salvation. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What's the sword of the Spirit? What's the sword of the Spirit? What is the sword of the Spirit? It's the Word of God. Amen? I was in a meeting. Down at Rama, where we got all Rama people, Rama students, people you think are on fire for God, and Billy Brim gets up and preaches, and she just walks up and down the aisles and goes, I see dull swords. I see dull swords. Meditating on the word hones the sword of the Spirit in your life. Jim, Jim, Jim read about the Word of God, that we, we need to do the Word. Doing the Word of God, that's what brings the victory, amen? Not doing it. I'm telling you this, it takes a conscious effort to meditate the Word of God. You can't just put on Game Boy or whatever. I mean, I don't know what it is because I can't play any of those. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if some Christians started inventing games where the Word of God, where, you know, it was like Sword of the Spirit. I wish I had that technology because you could do it. You could have some mighty weapons coming out of kids' mouths and destroying demons all over the place. Amen. Come on! It's going to happen. Every believer needs to become a skillful swordsman. Yes. Every one of you. Yep. Right. Oh, I don't need it. No, let me tell you. You're living in this life, the devil's going to come and attack you. And you need to become skillful, a skillful swordsman with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Do you believe that? Are you going to do something about it? Yeah. The ancient, listen to this, I got this from Rick Renner. The ancient Roman writer, Vegetius, wrote a book called Concerning Military Matters. Yeah, vegetarian, I know Marcy would like that. Concerning Military Matters. I'm sorry I said that. I love vegetables too. Right next to the venison. I love green beans with bacon in them. I know I shouldn't have done that. People's minds are wandering. Come on. Concerning military matters. In it he said the Roman soldiers were not taught to cut by slashing their foes. But they were taught to thrust their swords. And actually, the Roman soldiers, they made fun of those who fought with the edge of their weapon and always found them an easy conquest. See, they, he wrote, he's continuing to write, this is a quotation from his book, a stroke with the edges, though, though made with ever so much force, seldom kills as the vital parts of the body are defended by both bones and armor. On the contrary, a stab, though it only penetrates a few in inches, is generally fatal. And that is exactly what Paul had in mind when he wrote, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. How vital it is that we understand what a powerful weapon the Word of God is when rightly wielded. 
when rightly wielded, we're not just hacking wildly. I'm telling you, when you put the word of God in your heart, when the devil comes to attack at that moment, Holy Spirit will bring that word to your remembrance, the exact word you meet, need, the exact word, and you won't be just hacking wildly and shooting a shotgun out there. You will be going, it is written. It is written. And you'll deal a death blow to the devil and put him back in his place. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. There is such power in this word. Life-changing power. Rescuing from hell and bringing him into the kingdom of God power. Health and healing power. Thank you, Lord. How vital is it that we understand what a powerful weapon the Word of God is when it's rightly wielded? Amen. How did Jesus defeat the devil? How did Jesus defeat the devil? He knew how to use the sword of the Spirit. You know, in Revelation, it gives a picture of him with the sword coming right out of his mouth. That's what it is. And uh, so, he defeated the devil with the rhema word of God. When you hold the word, hone the word in your heart and your mind, Holy Spirit will quicken a specific word for you to thrust into the devil. Come on. You wield the sword of the spirit with your mouth, not with karate kicks. <laughs> exactly. The devil does the same thing. I got them deceived. If, if we turn to Matthew 4, 1 through 11, I'm just going to read it. You can read it up on the screen or turn to it, but... It's in the King James. Then, then Jesus was led up of the Spirit. Remember this, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus... <coughs> laid down his deity when he came to earth and became a man. He was all God, but he had to lay down his deity. So Jesus, you'll see, Jesus didn't go, do you know who you're talking to? I'm Jesus. I'm the word of God. I'm the son of God. He didn't say that. That's not how he defeated him. He did this as an example for us. He had the word stored in his heart and it rose up in him just at this time. Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Whew. That was cutting. I'm telling you, that, that sunk deep. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, what Jim read this morning, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Exactly. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, the devil keeps bothering him. Then the devil takes him up into a holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Now the devil will try to twist the scriptures. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. You know, he used the same technique on Eve. 
twisted the word of God. Didn't God say? Didn't God say? He's a master of deception. That's why, that's why we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and praying in other tongues because it'll help the Holy Spirit quicken the word to you and you'll know that you know that you know right from wrong. Demonic from heavenly. Amen? Amen. Let's see what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and says unto him, all these things I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. What are you talking about? He is called the G-O-D, little God of this world. Adam surrendered it all over to him and the devil said, hey, what he was telling Jesus, hey, you're not going to have to go through all that. Just fall down and worship me and I'll make you the ruler over this whole planet. It was a temptation. It says it was a temptation. Jesus said unto him, where am I? Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil fled from him. And behold, angels and came, came and ministered to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't leave home without your sword. Don't leave home without it. Because you're going out into the world and the devil is the G-O-D of this world. And he is on a rampage trying to steal our children. Trying to pervert our education system. calling things that are evil good and brainwashing people into believing that they are and calling good things like God evil. Notice Jesus didn't start praying when the devil came. He didn't fall down on his knees and say, Oh, Father, rebuke the devil. I'm just telling you, he didn't. He skillfully wielded a rhema word of God like a well-placed stab wound. One rhema word from the Holy Spirit coming out of your mouth has the power to eliminate every enemy attack. Thank God for the sword of the Spirit. Amen? Yeah. Woo! Look at all the pages in that. Do you see that? Every one of them is a stab wound to the devil. This is what we live by. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word. Every word. A second death blow to the devil is using the power and authority that is in the name of Jesus. Amen. No other name but the name of Jesus. It is a mighty, mighty weapon. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Jason was saying today, the name of Jesus is above depression. It's above sickness. It's above disease. It's above cancer. It's above poverty. It's above lack. It's, a, it's, a, it's above dysfunctional families. It's above it. Are you listening? 
that, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. I thank God. You and I have willingly bowed our knee to the Lord Jesus. You and I willingly confess that Jesus is Lord. But I'm telling you, there's coming a day when we'll all stand before the, the judgment seat. And you and I will gloriously just thank you, Jesus. You are truly Lord. We worship you. We honor you. And the angels of God will go over and all those people that haven't bowed their knee, they'll crack their knees. And they'll say, on your knees and confess that Jesus is Lord. They'll crack the knees of every demon and devil and say, on your knees and confess that Jesus is Lord. But we willingly honor that name. Amen? And because we honor that name, God honors us. Are you listening? There is no greater name than the name of Jesus and he gave us power of attorney or delegated the use of his name for believers to use, for believers everywhere to use to defeat the devil. Whew. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Woo! You could be a believer for Two days. You could be a believer for two minutes and you are armed with the name of Jesus. You can defeat the devil. Amen. Well, I haven't really been trained up. If you know the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, if anybody ever woke up in the middle of the night and you just have like an anxiety, panic attack or fear, you don't have to hold up your hand. I have. And I knew, I knew. Here's the truth. Before I got saved, I never had that happen. With me, I'm not saying somebody else. Before I got saved, I never had that happen. But I wake up and I knew the devil was in my room. And it seemed like I could hardly say anything. And I, Jesus, Jesus. And then I could say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he will Flee from you. You have the name of Jesus. Use it. Use it wisely, my son. It will defeat the devil every time. Come on. Woo. Woo. I'm serious. You look in the mirror, you see you. When you say in the name of Jesus, the devil sees Jesus. Are you listening? I said, are you listening? Come on, sister. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? I said, are you a believer? If you're not, you can become one right now. Michelle was telling me at the youth group last night, they, she gave, they gave an altar call. And a young man who had come just off the street, I guess Kimser invited him a couple weeks ago. This is the story I got. And he came a couple weeks ago, and then he came back last night. And Michelle gave an altar call and said something about accepting Jesus. And he said, you, you mean I can do that tonight? <laughs> come on! People haven't even heard. He's like, you mean I can do that tonight? Yeah, you can. You mean I can do that tonight? And he accepted the Lord. Come on. All heaven. Do you know when he did that? The angels started throwing a party. No, we need to get a little more excited about it. The Everything stopped in heaven. Woo! There was a party going on. They were celebrating. Because they know what hell's like, what it, what, is, what it is. And they knew one, another one had been rescued. Another one had been rescued. Hallelujah. 
just because he confessed the name of Jesus. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You're a believer, right? Yep. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name you shall cast out devils. You know, the devil doesn't shudder at people flying 35,000 feet and karate kicking and doing, but he will flee any believer that knows the name of Jesus belongs to him and that skillfully thrusts it and uses it as a death blow to his schemes. Amen? Amen? Come on. That is who you are. That is who you are. The devil's bothering my family. Get your sword out and take the name of Jesus and run yes. that yes. SOB yes. off. Yes. Son of a baloney guy. Son of a booger, right. Run him off. Run him off. You're God's property. You've been bought with a precious price. Jesus paid dearly to have you come into the family. And I will not allow that thief, that murderer, that liar, that deceiver to run around my family. And you have that authority. Come on. Come on. Woo! In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Could we pass out the elements? Could I get people to pass out the elements? We're taking communion. Finally. So what do you have? You have the sword of the spirit. You have the word of God. And my brother and sister, you have the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Let me get one. Hallelujah. The blood of the Lamb. There is devil destroying power in the precious blood of the Lamb. I've said devil destroying power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12, 10 and 11, it says this, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And the word of their testimony. And they loved their lives not unto death. What do you think that means? It means, by the word of your testimony, what is your testimony? I have faith in the blood of the Lamb. What's your testimony? I have faith in the blood of the Lamb. That is my testimony. Come on. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. It says he's before God night and day, pointing out your shortcomings. Listen, I know mine. It takes him night and day to tell God all of them. Are you listening? So he's there. He's pointing them out. He's trying to show God where you're missing it. He's trying to point out everything you've done wrong. Reminding the Lord. And I look to Jesus, 
The Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for me, for you. The devil's up there accusing us. The devil's up there presenting his case. And we turn and look to Jesus. The author, the finisher of our faith. He's our defense. And we look to him and we say, Lord, Lord, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I can't make, I'm not going to make excuses. I'm not going to say, well, you know, some of that's true. I'm just looking to Jesus and I'm just, Jesus, I plead the blood. And Jesus looks over at the Father and he says, he approaches the bench and he says, Father, this whole case boils down to one piece of evidence. This whole case boils down to one piece of evidence. My, your son, your daughter has faith in my blood. And I rest my case on the blood of the Lamb. And the Father, the judge of all, picks up the great gavel of heaven and slams it down and says, not guilty by reason of the blood of the Lamb. I'm saying that I feel the cleansing, forgiving, redeeming, reconciling, healing power that's in the blood of the Lamb. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. What are you doing? You're presenting your case. You've, you've gotten rid of every, all this other stuff, any kind of evidence, any kind of like, well, the devil said that and I didn't do that, or the devil said this, I didn't do that. You've gotten rid of it all. It all boils down to one piece of evidence that overrides everything. Come on. Do you have faith in the blood? Do you have faith in the blood? Amen? Amen. I mean, I know this is a simple message, but there is such power in these things. These three things, you are armed and dangerous to the devil. He don't want nobody to know this. He would rather them doing karate kicks and I was going to say something, I don't know. If it's <laughs> Messing around with all that other stuff that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We are not ignorant of, of the devil's devices, but we also know. And we are trained, we know how to use the weapons that God has provided for us. We are we are expert swordsmen with the word of God. Yes. We know how to use the name of Jesus. And we have faith in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Woo! Glory to God! As we plead the blood of Jesus, well, let me read this. Young's literal translation, Romans 3.25. Whom God did set forth a mercy seat. You know what the mercy seat was? That's where the blood was presented. That's where the blood for your redemption was presented. You and I, we each have an individual mercy seat. God set forth a mercy seat through 
faith in his blood. For, for the showing forth of his righteousness because of the passing over of the bygone sins in the forbearance of God. As we plead the blood of Jesus, we're declaring our faith in the blood. Jesus, our advocate, our intercessor, presents our plea to the Father. And he says, Father, all that the accuser says may be true, but this man or woman has faith in the overcoming power of my blood and by their own testimony. By their own testimony, they have declared their faith in the mercy of God that comes through the blood. Ooh. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood, precious blood of the Lamb. It is written in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb. So today, as we partake of the table of the Lord, we're declaring our faith in the blood. We are testifying. This is our testimony. We are declaring to the world, we're declaring to the Father God, and we're declaring to the devil that we have faith in the blood of the Lamb. That's what we're doing today. We're doing it in obedience to Jesus, and we're doing it because we have faith. Amen. We know and believe that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb, and today, as we partake of communion, we are skillfully thrusting a mortal blow to the devil's schemes and his power over our lives. You got bad habits. You got things that aren't going right. You got things that you know should be changed. You got sickness in your body. You've got, uh, you got some areas of lack or you need finances. You need a change. Today, you're testifying. Today, you're thrusting a death blow to the devil's schemes in your life. Amen. I believe that. I believe there's power in communion. And so, Father, we're so thankful. You need to just think of that. Whatever it is, is there's one thing that's standing out in your, your mind. Just, just think of that, and as you're doing it, you're pleading your case. Jesus is interceding for you. 